So when I see problems like this, and in general when you sort of, you're either writing exam problems because you often have to write problems for your own students, or when I was a student, I was doing these kinds of problems. There's two ways you can approach this. One way is to just fixate like a laser on this word area, like the thing you want to do. It says find the area, and you're like, I'm going to do this. That, as I found out when I was young, I didn't used to be a good mathematician, um, that makes you crash and burn. A better approach is not to worry about what the answer to question is yet. You're just going to hope you're going to get there. But instead, to start with what you've got and to write down all the true things that are out there. So let's start with that, um, if that's OK. So what do we know about this? What can we observe that is true? Some of those things might not be relevant in the end. We don't care. We're just going to write down true things. So thing one, we've got a rectangle. We know opposite sides of the rectangle are equal. This is a bit washed out. This is a y minus 8 and a y plus 2. This is an x down here. We start by writing down true things. We know opposite sides of a rectangle are equal, right? You can just read and see it. This is this. Well, this thing down here is an x. And this thing up here, this part is a y minus 8. And this part here is a y plus 2. And so you get from this geometric picture an algebraic equation. x is y minus 8 plus y minus 2. And as someone, it's been a, a little minute okay. since I've done NCEA. So far, pretty straightforward? Yeah, so far, not too bad. This is the thing we'd hope people can do. And you can combine like terms here. So you have a y and a y. So we can combine that into 2y. And you have a minus 8 and a plus 2. So combine that into minus 6. And so x is 2y minus 6. That's a true thing. Do we know what it's going to do yet? No, that's OK. We can wait on that. So it's not really much further you can take this. If you see something, you go for it. I don't, personally. So I'll move on. And then we just did top and bottom blanks, right? So we attempt to do like left and right sides. If something works once and tells you something useful, then you try the other thing. And so on the left, you've got x minus 4. And on the right of your rectangle, they're giving you more information. They're saying this is a y. And then. They haven't labeled this bit. And you're like, y plus something. And this is not immediately obviously useful. Uh, in my head, I'm going to cross this out for right now. We tried doing this. We tried getting information. This part right here is an unknown, nor is it labeled. So I'd suspect that maybe it's a bit of a red herring. Maybe you don't go down that way. If we do, I can, just, I can undo that cross. It's fine. We're just writing down things that are true. We're seeing what happens. So these two things far, right? So third thing we know is we're told this shaded rectangle has an area of 9 centimeters squared. And what's the area of a rectangle? So we know that it's 9, but we also know things about this rectangle, right? We've got its lengths labeled for us. And we know that the area of a rectangle is the product of its lengths, right? So we're going to get, again, from this geometric information, an algebraic equation. Because the area of a rectangle is going to be like base times height. So what is the base of this? We can see it's y minus 8. And what is the height of this? And this is actually, uh, so I looked at this problem before, and I made this mistake. Um, it's really tempting to look at this diagram, especially if you're feeling real nervous on this exam, and you're like, ah y minus 8, x minus 4, space, height. But this is tricky. Uh, this thing is actually, there's an x minus 4 by this diagram. And if you're not looking at it carefully, you would think that it corresponds to just the shaded rectangle. And it's not. It does tell you it's the whole thing. But if you're nervous, you can make this mistake. This is a thing where good students would make this mistake not for mathematical reasons, mm -hmm. but just because they've got tunnel vision. And so I don't think it's going to let you test what you really want to see. Because what you really want to see is, can people turn geometry into algebra and vice versa? Not, are they OK with reading slightly misleading diagrams? Um, but there's nothing mathematically wrong with this. It's just, it's an easy mistake to make. It's one I made when I first tried this problem. It's one I imagine a lot of students will make on this problem. But let's assume that we do this the right way, and we notice that this actually, this y, 
that is on the other side of the diagram, it is actually giving you the height here. And so we're going to get a nice y minus a times y. And that is what they intended you to get. This is indeed valid. Everything's good so far. OK. And so we know that 9 is y minus 8 times y. And we're thinking, ah, we're in an algebra test. We should do algebra. Um, so we'll expand this out. Again. So y minus 8 times y. I get a y squared minus 8y. That's equal to 9. And then I'm going to pull the 9 over to one side, because equations are always nicer when all your terms are on the same side. So I get y squared minus 8y minus 9 is 0. And then this is probably like a bit rusty. But Fantastic. for the students at home, they can factor this. If you got here, I think a lot of students are going to be able to go, ah, that's going to be y minus 9 y plus 1 is 0. You can get that with the quadratic formula. I think most students will just get it by looking at it. Um, it's like, I want things that multiply to minus 9 and then add to minus 8. Because we're about to get to the area of it. Because we sort of we wrote down these true things, right? Mm -hmm. um, you could go one more with this. If the product of two things is 0, the one or the other has to be 0, right? And if one or the other of these is 0, whether y minus 9 is 0 or y plus 1 is 0. Again, this might be a bit quick for people that aren't our students at home. But our students are going to be able to go, this is y is 9 or y is minus 1. So this is all the, we've done this all like pretty much algebraically, right? Here's where you got to think geometrically. y is a length here, right? Is minus 1 a valid length? No. And so y is 9. And so we've learned something here, right? So we're making progress. Um, so we've got x is 2y minus 6. This is a dead end. And y is 9. These are the three things we've deduced so far. And from this, you're, you're pretty much home free, right? Like if you know y is 9, you know x is related to y, you should know what x is. So x, we said, was 2y minus 6. So 2 times 9 minus 6, 2 times 9, 18 minus 6 is 12. Is this an area yet? <laughs> no, but it feels really cool, right? Like we're learning more things. <laughs> and there's not really, I claim you keep trying to do true things, you get stuck here. You're like, I'm kind of out of stuff. OK, now, once you feel like you came up with a lot of things, now we're going to come back to this problem. Because now, this problem is not so bad. It said find the area of this rectangle ABCD, right? Well, what's area? Based on type, we did it before. And the base is x, right? Correct. Yeah. So we've got 12. And the height is x minus 4. So 12 times 12 minus 4. So 12 times 8, so 80, 16, 96, assuming nothing's gone horribly wrong.